One is that there's some unknown chemistry, some chemistry we don't know about. The second more intriguing possibility is that there might be some kind of life form in the Venus atmosphere that is producing the phosphine that we have detected. I'm joined now by Seth Shostak, a senior astronomer at the SETI Institute, which searches for extraterrestrial life. Uh, good to have you with us. So tell us about this discovery, phosphine in the clouds above Venus. Why does this mean that there could be life in the clouds? Well, it's simply because phosphine, which you can detect in the atmosphere of the Earth, it's a pretty uh, noxious gas, it's smelly, it's toxic, but it's produced by life, or it's occasionally produced by volcanoes. So the question is, could there be life in the clouds of Venus, or is it just some sort of chemistry? And I, I might point out that you mentioned that the surface temperature of Venus is almost 500 degrees Celsius, but when you go up to uh, 50 kilometers, which is where this phosphine was found, the temperatures are the same as in downtown Ankara. So this is interesting because, uh, as far as I'm aware, scientists have, I mean, they've, they've, there's been a lot of concentration on Mars, trying to find whether there's evidence of life on Mars, and scientists haven't really been looking at Venus because, as you say, of the surface temperature. Uh, I guess everyone assumed it was a sterile planet, but this might not be the case. Yes, and that's, I think, one of the great surprises. It's probably more than likely, as Sarah Seeger just mentioned to you, it's more than likely that this will turn out to be biology, uh, I'm sorry, not biology, geology, and not biology. But on the other hand, nobody has paid much attention to Venus. Everybody pays attention to Mars, because Venus was indeed just thought to be some sort of planetary version of hell. But as mentioned, you know, it could be up in the clouds. And keep in mind that if you had visited Venus maybe two billion years ago, you would have found oceans on the surface and stuff like that that's very conducive to the production of life. So it could be that life got started on Venus and then Venus began to go bad, the oceans boiled away, and some of that life took refuge up in the clouds. So that's an example of global warming to the extreme, I guess. Uh, if it turns out that there, uh, that there is life, well, I guess the first question is, how are they going to be able to determine if this phosphine was produced by bacteria? And if it is, is it a game changer? Well, uh, yeah, it, you can prove it if you can send some hardware to Venus. Uh, send a probe, have it drop down into the surface of Venus and hope that it survives when it finally lands on the surface uh, long enough to radio back the data. So that's probably the only way you're, don't, you're going to confirm it. But indeed, it would be a game changer because it would be the first confirmed uh, example of biology beyond Earth. I mean, we think there's a lot of life out there. There are trillion planets in the Milky Way. Hard to believe they're all sterile, but we still don't have the proof, and this could be the proof. Excellent stuff, Seth. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Seth Shostak there.